we can start, yes? Dear colleagues, I am very pleased to be here today, work with you. It's my first time in Bucharest, in Romania, so I am very happy and I thank you for you invite me and I hope today it will be interesting day for you. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't like to tell that I am here to teach you something. Um, I am here to share with you with my experience because all we offer, we are colleagues and we work with uh, uh, our patients and to teach something, uh, it is very uh, interesting sound I seen in some workshops where a plastic surgeon came to dermatologist and tell, oh, today I will teach you. And the, uh, he thinks that he's more clever like dermatologist. No, no. We all work with one problem with the aging. You work with your side and your uh, techniques. We work with our techniques. And when we mix it, we get a perfect result. Uh, today, my name is Alexander Karpinski. I am plastic surgeon and uh, international trainer of <coughs> High Law Company. Today, I would like you to tell uh, a few words about full face correction using our fillers, which are called Alexa. Uh, for somebody of you, it's something new. So today, we will um, see the indications, the advantages and other way. Me as a surgeon like anatomy, so today it will be a lot of anatomy. <coughs> I think it will be interesting for you because how to understand where we can be safety, yes, when we injecting something. Only learn anatomy, yes. And it is a way to get safety results. Uh, okay. Mm, thank you. Uh, our face are divided into three main parts. All of you know it. <coughs> uh, upper, mid face, and uh, <coughs> lower face. Uh, today we will focus on the uh, most popular indication of the mid face, some indications of the upper face, and of course, very popular nowadays, lower face. We will talk about the uh, how to correct age-relating changes and uh, <clears throat> how to make the beautification of young patient. I would like to start with the mid face. Uh, of course, I would like to um, hear your asks and I will be very happy to answer them. So make our communication more alive, yes. So uh, if you want to ask something only, raise your hand, it will be perfect. Okay, the mid face. <coughs> mid face, it is uh, really center of harmony and the balance of the face. Uh, both changes of the lower face, uh, both changes of other parts of face really begins in the mid face. So uh, that's why I will start with this uh, important part of face and when new patient come to your clinic that she or he don't do anything before and for example ask you doctor please fill my nasolabial folds or inject something in my uh, in my periorbital area the bo in both times I think it is better to start with a mid-face correction. I will try to explain you why I think so. Okay, uh, what is the reason of all age-relating changes? Yes, of course, all changes start with the bone resorption. And you know, like, uh, this is our uh, place which uh, which role the main which plays the main role of our beauty of our uh, young aging and when resorption begins it uh, destroy 
the stability of all layers of the face. We have a little situation. Okay. okay. Better put it like yeah. here. Okay. okay. Because it makes like. Uh -huh. Okay. Now it's better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, thank you. And here it is a very interesting uh, book, Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, and uh, Brian Mendelssohn, as a father of new anatomy that we are studying now, uh, shows us how, uh, what is the vectors of resorption, yes, and uh, see, for example, as you see on the orbital uh, ring, it become wider in the, uh, in the uh, medial, uh, part and the lower part, and it becomes more quadrant. Also, the same situation with the uh, with the maxilla, with the mandibula, and other and with the nasal cavity. Okay. Uh, also, uh, nowadays it's very popular to talk about uh, gender uh, changes with uh, man and woman because uh, last times last years it is very popular <coughs> when male patient come to our clinics for beautification for correction of aging changes so we need to do some uh, we need to do some speciality for the male and female patient uh, closer it is a male skull here we can see female skull and what is the main difference? All lines of the male skull, all uh, shapes are more uh, quadrant, more uh, like a, uh, mm, more huge. Here you see more delicate lines and else and else. So when we do some correction, for example, it is very uh, we we can find it when we do uh, jawline correction and sometimes. I see beautiful girls and they are overcorrected with the uh, jaw lines and they become more masculinity. So it is really a problem to understand it. Uh, the main difference between the um, mid face in a man and in a, a woman. So uh, as you see, I think here she is, it is beautiful woman. Uh, you can tell me that this man is also handsome uh, so uh, the main um, differences between the mid face in uh, young uh, woman and man is that the line of mid face in a woman starts from the uh, starts from the down and goes up in the uh, go, goes uh, goes up and man has a specific uh, parallel to the floor horizontally uh, linear of the uh, mid face. That is the difference. If, for example, we will inject for Brad Pitt uh, mid face like sh this girl has, she will lose his. He will lose his handsome and become more looks like woman. Okay, uh, and <clears throat> another very interesting um, study, which are called aging and sexual differences of the human skull. And really we will see the difference, as I tell you before. Uh, in a man, the mid face presents more clear cut angles, irregular surface and little anterior projection, not so huge. Uh, and in the woman, both of the mid face and the mandibular are more septal decrease and rounded in shape. So there is a really main difference we can find. Uh, age relating changes, how they work, how they change with the age, yes. For example, here you can find the skull of 35 years, 55 and 75. And focus please on the orbit, how it change. It's really dramatic changes by bone resorption. So <clears throat> all before all our injection, we need to put our finger on the bone of our patient, feel where it's ending, and on, only after that make injection. Because sometimes we can, if we don't do it, we can inject something inside the orbit or inside inside the nasal cavity. Uh, also, my words, we can 
uh, see on the another uh, another trial where uh, they make the CAT scans of the different groups of patient and you see really the orbit change with age become more wide not so around like it was in the Yankee and <coughs> uh, the needle of uh, the the angle of the mid face with the age it changed become more wide yes and we lost the bone we lost the projection and our face become tired yes that's why uh, in a young uh, of patients in the old patients very often we need to start to, uh, mm, to start our correction with the mid face to uh, to make volume uh, that patient use. Uh, also, very interesting thing that loss of um, bone in the area of pear-shaped aperture with the support of the lateral cartilages of the tip of the nose. So, one of the age-related changes is that tip of the nose goes down. Sometimes, when we inject filler in the correct way at this area, as a bonus, we will have the effect of upper of uh, nose tip. It's very interesting. And as I tell you before, the orbit changing. It become white uh, and uh, uh, we lose volume and we see all difference with the soft tissues of the, this area. Uh, very interesting um, image. Uh, you can see uh, the three levels of injection and uh, I can I, I, I want to ask you what is the correct way for injection first third or second and some of you tell me that the best way to correct mid face it is inject hyaluronic acid filler uh, in the for example uh, soft tissues some will tell you that the best way is to inject superficially. Uh, somebody tell, maybe I tell that the best way is to inject deeper on the bone, periosteal injection. And this is the problem with uh, mm, that part of medicine where we are now, where we work, where we contain with the anatomy, yes? Uh, because there are no, um, nowadays we don't have the uh, only one protocol how to make the correction and it will be correct like we have in surgery yes we have some types of operation <coughs> and we we know that this operation is safety and nobody wants to um, tell oh I find new operation it's more good nobody want to do it because we know safety variant of operation I hope that in some years we will get the same protocols in aesthetic medicine, yes, because when I see some, how it called, mm, after techniques of injection, I am very angry and uh, it's doctors who cannot do anything, that they tell the patients, okay, it's my technique, it works perfect. How you think that it was perfect? Do you have some trials? Do you... Mm, have some results, do you have some visia, catescans? It's not a good idea. We need to learn literature and understand, go to cadaver courses and only that understand how to inject correctly, but don't uh, make new techniques. Okay, uh, we start to work, we start to see the anatomy of the mid face. First, we start with the bone. Uh, it is very mm, easy to understand bo an bone anatomy of the face. Both area of the mid face, it is uh, maxilla bone. Yes, we call this zygomaticus region, but zygoma, it is only 30% of this area. Both <coughs> volume, it is uh, by maxilla bone. And the uh, zygomaticus processus, it is the last part of this uh, area. Uh, we have two um, main foramens where we can find nerves. Uh, here you see the zygomatical facial foramen. Here goes on the face 
uh, zygomaticus branch of the facial nerve. Uh, and uh, here you can see the infraorbital foramen. Uh, very often we uh, heard about this foramen and we afraid about this structure. Uh, and some companies I heard they tell us, pull your finger, put it here, and if when patient uh, feel pain, put some a point here, it will be ma and you will be safety. Uh, it's very interesting, but I think that our nature, which create us, uh, cannot stay such important anatomical structure without some uh, without some safety structure. Yes, so that's why if we see uh, our for infraorbital foramen allocated, allocated, allocated here, and uh, in the top it is covered by the uh, lower part of the orbital and our nerve and artery are going from uh, up to down, yes? Uh, that's why uh, when we inject something, when we inject some product, we need to make our injection, it doesn't matter, cannula or needle you use, uh, because I saw a lot of situation where a doctor used cannula and makes a uh, needle for do entry point and put it from down to up for this area. And only with this needle you can damage this very important uh, structure, yes, and make the contusion of nerve. So all our injection, needle, cannula must be perpendicular, yes, because when you will inject like in 19 degrees, it will be more safety like when you inject from up to down in this area. Here you can see how we cannot inject because the position, this position of needle can go, go inside the foramen and it will be very terrible side effect. Okay, uh, about bone it is very, very, very easy. Now we put some soft tissues for our skull and uh, go to the next one. So here you see the orbicularis muscle, very uh, important structure for us. We know about it. We work with the uh, botulotoxinum when, when we <coughs> use it for this muscle. Here today, orbital muscle will be for us very good for understanding um, the layers of the face because in this area, in this area, um, periorbital muscle, orbicularis oculi muscle, it is uh, like a border uh, which separate all deep structures of the face and all superficial. So deeper uh, of orbicular, uh, orbicularis muscle, we can find bone, we can find retaining ligaments of the face, deep muscles uh, and anatomical spaces. Superficial level we can find superficial fat pads and skin. So when I will tell you that we injecting deep, we automatically means that we will be deeper of orbicularis muscle. When we talk that we our injection will, will be superficial, it will means that we are uh, over the muscle. Uh, it's a part of SMAS in this area, part of superficial musculoponeurotic system, which really separate our face or uh, um, superficial structures with deep structure of the face. And uh, here is uh, um, some part of the uh, classical mid-face lifting surgery. And as you see, surgeon separate orbicularis oculi muscle, put fingers, put it up, and you see the malar fat pad. It is superficial pad and it's really tell that I tell you true because it is superficial structure. Deeper this muscle, we can find deep structures of the face. Okay, let's talk about the uh, fat of the face. We, ha we have two uh, types of the uh, fat compartments of the face, superficial, subcontinuous fat that we can touch ourselves and feel it, yes? We feel the superficial fat pads, uh, which allocated superficial 
under the skin. And uh, deep on the bone, we can find the deep fat pads. Uh, this is very differently uh, types of, pad, of, of fat, yes, and they become different changes with the age. Uh, I would like to, tell, uh, to show you a very interesting trial. Uh, uh, so they uh, make the higher resolution magnetic resonance and see how uh, change uh, superficial fat pads of the face. And the conclusion was that the superficial fat compartments increase in volume with age. So we have the hypertrophy of the um, superficial fat pads with the aging, yes. So all our superficial injection with fillers don't mm, correct age-relating changes, yes. If we will inject, for example, superficial filler in nasolabial fold, our patient don't be younger after session. Uh, it will be, she will be older, yes, because we make these changes with the fillers. Uh, in that layer of the face, you must work with some products which work with the volume, which will, um, which will uh, make volume, uh, uh, which will um, treat uh, this compartment. So ferment therapy, lipolysis, and other, other ways that you use. And what about the deep uh, fat pads, deep fat compartments? It is deep structure with allocated on the bone. And unfortunately, with the aging, it become, um, they, in, uh, they increase in volume. So uh, they, uh, they are not increase, they are lost in volume. So, and when we inject the fillers of the, in this layer of the face, uh, we provide support of the overing structures of the face. So this layer, it is the best layer where we can <coughs> put our uh, hyaluronic acid filler. And a few words about the retaining ligaments. <coughs> Somebody tell us that retaining ligaments change with age, yes? Me, like a surgeon, I can tell you that the, the location of the orbicularis sagomaricus retaining ligaments in the patient in 20 years will be the same like in patient in the 70 years. Of course, the, uh, of course, the, um, of course it can change uh, in the skin, yes, but where uh, is it beginning from the bones, this is place don't change with age. So retaining ligaments really, uh, uh, it is structure that occupy a constant anatomical position and don't change the beginning <coughs> of it with the age. That's why it is very interesting <coughs> for us because if we understand that this point, for example, where zygomaricus ligament began, it don't change with age, we can put our filler here above this a zygomaricus ligament and filler will don't goes down, yes? So we will have the stability result. That's why it's very interesting theory of phase mm, volumization, yes? Uh, ligament, it is a really <coughs> powerful structure. It, uh, it looks like tree. So I will explain you this structure it don't change with age. Of course, these small branches uh, with allocated on, <coughs> on the level of dermis and hypodermis, they will change, but the main <coughs> ligament don't change. So we can inject our hyaluronic acid filler over the ligament. Ligament will take it and our filler will don't go down. There are two types of <coughs> retaining ligaments true retaining ligaments, which are beginning, beginning from the bone, from the periosteum, going through all layers of the face, and they are ending in the skin. And then false retaining ligaments, which are beginning from the deep face fascia, yeah, and they are ending <coughs> also in the skin. They are also very, very strong structures. Uh, and very important to understand that in our mid-phase, 
two main ligaments, orbicularis retinal ligament and the zygomaticus retinal ligament, they are continuous and uh, uh, they uh, create tear trough ligament. And <coughs> when they are containing, they create uh, some space which are called <coughs> prezygomaticus space. You see what is ligament? It's not something like thread, yes? It's not, it not something like thin structure. It is powerful structure with a lift our face. Uh, here it looks like, so if we will inject hyaluronic acid, our hyaluronic acid filler Alexa here, put it in correct way, will have <coughs> stability result. Yes, and uh, really uh, these ligaments create new structure for us, maybe not new for you, maybe somebody know it, which is called prezagomaticus space. It is space which are covered by two types of <laughs> membrane and inside this prezagomaticus space there are no any vessels and nerves. So it uh, for us, it is really a safety area where we can inject our hyaluronic acid filler. It, I, I can tell you that it is the best place on the mid face where we can inject filler because it is stability result and it is safety result. So let's try to understand where we can find this prezagomaticus space. Uh, it uh, contains four borders. Deep border, it, it is a periosteum, so when we, if we like to use cannula, all our injection must be with the needle to the periosteum. Uh, lower border, it is uh, our zygomaticus ligament. Upper border, it is the uh, orbicularis ligament. And the, uh, and the, um, and this border is the uh, orbicularis muscle. So we can use needle, we can use cannula in this area. If we use cannula, it is, I like cannula using for this correction because when we use cannula, when we put our cannula in this space, we feel like uh, to these sounds. It means that we are going through, through membranes of the prezagomaticus space and after that we feel that we are going really to some space, whereas the moving of our cannula is unpainful for patient, yes? Mm, so today I will show you it's very easy to find it and really correction is safety and uh, safety because we don't have any uh, vessels inside and it is uh, controlled because uh, uh, <coughs> our uh, ligament will lift our filler, yes? Uh, here you see how it looks inside, uh, blue. Of course, in the real life, we don't have this blue color. And to find this space, uh, we need to separate uh, soft tissues, yes. And uh, when we separate it, we, um, we fixed it, yes. But in aesthetic medicine, we don't have some procedure that can fix this space, yes? So we have the perfect fillers and we can fill this uh, space and the patient will get more younger. Uh, let's see the borders, how to find on the face, yes? So the uh, medial border will be uh, our uh, uh, mid-face, uh, of uh, deformity and the mid face. Uh, uh, lower border will be the line from the uh, tip of the nose to the ear tragus. Um, uh, lateral uh, will be a border, the more prominent part of the uh, zygoma arch, and the upper border will be. Uh, one centimeter uh, lower uh, of the orbit. And here you, we see the prezagomaricus space, most safety place where we can inject filler. Here as you see the facial nerve branches of the face. Yes, we see the, uh, we see the marginal, we see the zygomaricus, buccal uh, part, and you see that no one 
no one branch goes, don't go through, the, through our Prezagamarico space. So it is really safety area to inject hyaluronic acid filler to fill it. Uh, very interesting thing that over the, here is our Prezagamarico space, over it we can find preceptal space where allocated preceptal fat. Of course, it's not orbital fat, it's not our eye bags, but also it plays uh, rich rule in the beginning of the eye bags. And very, one very famous injector, Stephen Liu, I like uh, how he, he inject, it's American famous injector. She first, uh, he firstly sees the differences when he starts to feel presagamarico space, the problems with eye bags in the patient uh, are disappearing. So if it is young patient with the uh, beginning with eye changes, with the uh, age changes in the periorbital area, first of all, we need to start to work with the mid phase and sometimes it will be enough and it will be correct our uh, patient problems in the periorbital area. So very important thing. If patient, young patient especially, come to your clinic with some tear trough deformity and want to feel it, uh, inject uh, hyaluronic acid filler here in the presagomatic space and you will see that all problems, or both problems of the periorbital area will disappear. Also, very important, uh, very good side effect. If, if can I tell you of presagomatic space correction is Next one, we see here um, zygomaricus major and minor muscle, yes? And uh, as we know, it, this muscle are uh, uh, depressors, like muscles of lower third of the face. And with aging, it becomes in hypertonus. Of course, nobody in, will inject the here botulinum toxin because we cannot find correctly place where we can do it. But if we will inject the hyaluronic acid filler in our parasagomaricus space, it will uh, push the places where these muscles are beginning. And the effect of myomodulation, it will relax this muscle and you will get better situation in the uh, lower phase. So very, a lot of positive side effects we can find after the uh, injecting filler in the parasagomaricus space. Here is um, how it looks inside. It, well, if somebody was on the cadaver course, you can catch it. Why I uh, show you this picture? Because we need to understand that injection 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 in this area don't change anything. Uh, we need uh, a lot of volume to work with this area. If it is young patient, mm, 0.5 per side, but very often I use one ml per one side, one ml per another side. If it is pa if patient is young, sometimes we will can use half, uh, one and half ml. Here you see the orbicularis retaining ligament. Here you see the zygomaticus retaining ligament, and inside we see really presagomaticus space. Uh, here uh, on this very nice cadaver. Uh, shooting, uh, the anatomists put orbicularis oculi muscle up and we see sub, sub orbicularis oculi fat, it is deep fat pad and deeper at the same position we can find the presagomarico space. Uh, this structure really we can find when we make uh, MRI, uh, here we can find the deep fat pads, yeah, lateral soup, medial soup, and uh, deep medial cheek compartment. So all our structure, it, of course, nobody in the medical university don't uh, teach this structure. Because when we are teaching in university, uh, aesthetic medicine was not so popular like now. Now, the, pop, the, popula <coughs> the popularity of aesthetic medicine um, starts us uh, to needing to need a more of anatomy so that's why we find these structures uh, how I inject it I like to use cannula 
uh, uh, you can use needle as I tell you, but with the cannula it is very easy to uh, to understand that you are in the correct way. So I make my entry point, I use cannula 22G, uh, 22G. Uh, I use a product which is called Alexa Volume. Uh, we need volumizing for this area. So I make entry point of the OG line which are located uh, in the most prominent part of the zygoma. I make entry point. After that, I take cannula and I put my cannula, trying to put <coughs> my cannula deep. And after that, because if you will don't do it, cannula will go in the layer where it's more easy to move and it, you will be superficial. Uh, you need to put your cannula uh, to the bone and after that you will feel like two sounds. It means that uh, you go, you are going through the two membranes of the presagomaticus space and after that you will feel like you are going from some, I don't know, like when you do intravenous injection, yes? Uh, you feel, uh, and you will ask your patient, what do you feel? And you will, you will move the cannula and patient will don't feel anything because inside there are no sensual nerves in this, uh, in this space. Uh, also, you can feel that you can sharp the bone when you're injecting. It is means that you are in the correct uh, layer. And you can inject in one point, one bolus, 0 0.5, because we understand that over us is orbicularis oculi muscle. And if we inject only one bolus, our patient will smile, eat something, muscle will work, and it will, be, it will pressure our um, product by all um, space, yes? Also, you can inject by a lineal retrograde technique using cannula, yes? As you want, it, you can do it. Uh, oh, I have some problem. My, uh, okay, here's yes, something wrong, but uh, mm, it's deep fat pads, yes, of the face, and uh, our injection must be entering here, entry point, OG line, yes, and we need to inject Prezagomaricus space. <sighs> There's about the mid phase. I think the best, the best, the best uh, place where you can put your filler, it is the Prezagomaricus space, in a basically. Uh, on today's workshop, um, where, where we have uh, hands-on training, I will show you this correction. It is very easy, simple correction and uh, very, very um, resultative. After that, I want to um, tell you a few words about the lower face. Also, it is uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting area of correction and I tell you a few words about the anatomy. I uh, hope it will be also very interesting. Uh, really, uh, resorption of the bone um, start all dramatic changes of the lower face. Yes, we see young and pretty woman with a good uh, volume of the bone and with the age we lo lose volume and it become like we see we and here you see how the wide of the uh, mandibular change with the age. It is really dramatic changes when we see how it becomes seen. Yes, and the, here you see in the young 35 years patient uh, what is the uh, shape and wide of the mandibular angle and here 75 years. So all time when we inject Mm. Uh, this area. Also, we need to palpate it. We need to put finger and feel where is our bone, because sometimes, especially in the patient which have uh, a lot of mm, superficial fat here, we can, we cannot, by our uh, eye, we cannot find the correct way. And if we will think only that here must be angle, it will be patient, old patient we will inject our syringe, our needle here, 
and here it will be the neck. It will be very, very dangerous area. So all times put your finger, feel where is the bone, feel changing, mark it, and after that only inject. Okay, here it is very interesting picture because we can find uh, the um, places where allocated facial muscles. Yes, and you see here all, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Here you see uh, all muscles that we, both of them we work. Uh, curagator, procerus, nasalis, and other. And you see the place of capture of this muscle with the bone, it is very, very little, yes? Here, here, zygomaricus, very little area. And as you see here, for example, temple muscle and the masseter, they are covered all the bone. What does it mean? It means that here, for example, at the our mandibular angle, it is no one place exactly where is separately bone. Bone and the muscle are one structures. You can, if when you will visit, or maybe somebody visit cadaver course, try to separate uh, masseter from mandibula. It, I think it, you will don't do it. Uh, because really here, masseter muscle covered all the bone, yes? It is one structure. We cannot talk that we are on the bone because we are in this structure, bone and muscle. So that's why, why I don't like the joint line injection. I inject it, but I don't like it. Why? Because when we will inject here on the bone, our product, it will be on the bone only at that moment where are we injecting. When we will finish injection and patient close her or his mouth, all products go to the muscle and it will be, it, it becomes water here and that's why we will get, uh, we will get uh, the angle. So uh, I think in aesthetic medicine, it is more interesting things that make uh, muscle uh, with the hyaluronic acid, but there is very popular indication and a lot of patients come for it. Do it, please, do it, please. Of course we, of course I, I do this correction. Mm. So here you see the masseter muscle, muscle, muscle. It is consists of two parts, superficial and deep. It is more important to understand when we make the botulino therapy in this area because if we only uh, work with the, for example, superficial part, after two weeks, patient come to us with more wider face, yes. So we need to, to don't forget it. And here you see really some part of the muscle was uh, covered and we see that really all surface of muscles catched by the uh, middle uh, bone. Uh, also, uh, also, 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 here, uh -huh. and if we see this uh, image, you will tell me that I tell you don't true, because here we can see the part where are uh, only the bone, yes, and we can take our syringe and make injection on this part, yes, like take it here and from up to down, make here, not perpendicular, but here injections, very nice idea. But on this area, we will find the marginal, the marginal um, branch of facial nerve. And if you will damage it, your corner of lip of the operation go, will go down. Of course, this part of the facial nerve uh, recovery in a lot of patient, yes. But um, the, this damage this, destroy this um, marginal part when we inject filler, it's very, very, very bad idea. So it's huge risk. So when I have the risk to the to d destroy some nerve or put filler inside the muscle, I will choose first. Uh, I will choose put filler inside the muscle because I don't want to work with this um, anatomical structures. I will show you technique how I inject on the next uh, my slides. 
here you can see the, mm, the angle, it is very easy, yes? It is of one minute injection and the patient is happy. But this, but here it is a huge problem of aesthetic medicine, yes? The bulldog chicks, yes, it's called. So it is really very difficult to do something with it. It is, of course, if we, we be honest, it is a surgical patient, but sometimes this woman come to your clinic and tell you, I'm afraid of surgery, do something please with injection, and else and else. Uh, so what we can do? Uh, it is really very difficult structures, bull, bulldog cheeks. So uh, here, uh, yellow point, it is a place where allocated mandibular retaining ligament, yes. As we know, all retaining ligaments don't change its position with the age. If we know where is it, here is it, we can inject filler over the ligament, make some volume that patient lose with the aging, and we will get very good contouring effect. Here it is this mandibular osseocotoneus ligament, yes, and we can inject over this, over this uh, product, over this ligament, make some volume here, and the situation with the contour become better. So the, only on the jawline we have two places really where injection will be safety and resultative. First, it is a, uh, angle of the uh, mandibular and mandibular ligament because here we have some ligaments uh, yes which will lift our filler <coughs> this part this part of uh, the um, jawline no one you will don't have good results because we don't have ligament to support fill your bone it is round shape it has round shape and if you will use filler with a good G prime, perfect, best filler, like Alexa fill volume. Gravitation is more aggressive and more, and more powerful like our fillers. Your filler after one, two, three days will go down and make bulldog cheeks. If, and it will be good if you will not destroy two uh, types of um, facial nerve branches. Yes, so this, is, this area is very dangerous and it's no chance to get good results because we, have, we don't have ligament support here. That's why when I see that doctors take syringe and make here injection, I think that it is a doctor has very good, very good um, an angle, uh, angel uh, of him of safety and doctors don't don't understand anatomy so please don't do it because it's dangerous and don't result it if only two places of the jawline if we if we are um, speaking about deep injection of course superficial injection it is worst situation because you will make the bulldog cheeks if you will inject hyaluronic filler superficial in superficial fat pads, yes, in jaw, jaw fat pad, because you will increase in volume this area and patient in the five, 10 days in one week become older. Don't do, please. I see sometimes another variant, especially it is with very popular in doctors who use um, calcium hydroxyapatite product. I don't like this product, but I see, I, I, I see the technique that they make entry point here with the cannula and take, oh, I will inject superficially, it will be safety. Take cannula and inject vectors here, like in this space. So here, uh, they are allocated three, two or three branches of facial nerve, and uh, uh, here you see parotid gland. It is very, very dangerous area to work in the superficial uh, structures with a cannula in this zone. Don't do it, only deep injection if you need uh, to make uh, some contouring, some volume. But don't do that injection because it's very, very dangerous. It's the zone of the highest uh, risk of the dangers. 
as you see our facial nerve, two branches, buccal and the marginal allocated here. They are superficial, they are, uh, they are uh, under this mask, but in cannula we can, with cannula, and we can also damage it. Here is a variant of the facelift surgery where we separate the skin and when we are going to this area we feel something that we cannot go uh, go in this area. It's a, really a location of our ligaments, yes, that I tell you before, mandibular retinal ligament. So it is really powerful structure F, and if we will inject filler here over the mm, ligament, it will uh, stand by uh, constant anatomical position and don't go down. You can use it with cannula like I uh, s uh, show you here, but in this area especially I would like to, I prefer to use the needle because we need injection in only one point. So uh, here, yes, we can find the artery, facial, which are going down and become uh, angularis, but artery is more superficial. We are, inject on, uh, we are injected on the bone, so it don't risk to make, uh, to make vascular um, disease. So here is the technique, which uh, how I inject jawline, yes, with the <coughs> using Alexa volume, using needle. Okay, it's our um, bulldog cheeks, yes, patient. Um, one centimeter more here, I find the, uh, the, the I find the mandibular retinal ligament, and one centimeter about the jawline, I make deep bone injection. Of course, I make aspiration test and put from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 per side. Yes, after that, if we are talking about the angle of mandibula, um, only one syringe per two sides don't show any effect. So we need to, uh, we need to use one ml per one side, one ml of product per another side. I use three points. Central point, which where I use 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ml of the product, deep injection, yes, and 0. 2, 0.2 to injections uh, lower and upper of my point. I am uh, making marking half centimeter per my angle upper, yes. Also very easy, very short and unpainful injection and shows good results. Uh, when we speak about the chin, also um, when we speak about the jawline, without chin correction, it don't cost anything. So. Okay, when we patient come to us, we need to tell patient and if you want to make the angle of mandibula, of course, perfect situation will be if we, we, <coughs> we make also the chin correction, yes, because when we change the shapes, it will be some diseases. So we need to make a reconstruction of all jawline. How I do the correction of the chin? Very, very easy. In the male patient, uh, the shape of the chin must be more quadrant, more round uh, in the female patient, as you see in this video. The same about the uh, jawline. Uh, we can use cannula. Uh, we, uh, our, and our injection must be deep, peri uh, periosteal injection. So entry point will be its beginning of the chin on the bone. After that, we use cannula 22, for example, use Alexa volume and put it, put it on the bone by linear retrograde technique. I prefer, <coughs> for example, this technique, don't this, but you can, if you want, you can do also this technique. Uh, don't forget about the mm, mental foramen and mental nerve. It's located mm, two centimeter upper of the uh, medial uh, retina line of the face, yes? So here we don't work with the needle, with the cannula, because here is uh, the point where we can find the nerve. Uh, how I do correction in the female patient? I use uh, uh, more often with, with the needle, of course. 
uh, I use three boluses, first to central bolus up to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and very close to this bolus, I use two smaller bolus, and this, uh, this technique uh, can help you to make the round, round uh, shape. If we need projection, little bit more upper, you, we can make another one, inject it, and patient will get the projection. Uh, if we speak about the male um, correction, we need to make the quadrant shape. So that's why I use two boluses, two huge boluses, which are located at the lines where are uh, ending of the uh, lips. One, two, I make two lines, and in the ending here, I make two boluses, 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.5. You will get very uh, good quadrant shape and mm, masculinum, it will be mas very masculinum. And if, of course, we know, of course, when, if we need the projection, uh, we are going a little bit more up. We find the place where is muscle uh, uh, captured by the bone and make uh, here one bolus to get the projection. Alexa volume also I use for this correction. Uh, I think anatomy is enough because I, it is maybe it become not interesting for you or it was interesting. How are you think? You are thinking. Okay, a few words about the filler uh, because somebody of you don't use it, and I can tell you the advantages of the. Alexa filler. We have, uh, G, of course, GMP and ISO certificates of quality. Uh, also, we have CE mark, yes, so it's certified in European uh, product and 100% manufacturing control of product. Uh, the um, production of filler is in Italy factory and one factory we have in Ukraine. Uh, for European country, uh, he, uh, hyaluronic acid filler, all uh, our fillers products in Europe. Uh, uh, raw material of hyaluronic acid we uh, buy in Japan, Shiseido. It's a, a huge monster of um, uh, making materials for cosmetic, for fillers. It is the best one. Uh, if somebody don't see how it looks, it looks like um, raw hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid. It looks like a, maybe like a snow. I don't know how it explain it. Uh, and uh, after that, we make it. We uh, we <coughs> buy it and make fillers from this hyaluronic acid uh, filler. So the main advantages of Alexa filler is that uh, we have low mode degree of modification of VD, not more than four. We have the uh, natural physiological pH level of the final product from 7.2 to 7.4. It means that our product don't uh, approve swelling or edema. And also we have a physiological osmolarity to uh, 290 microsmol. Also, 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 uh, Alexa is, uh, we have a specific PBS uh, buffer system, which make our filler, up our filler to all physiological, um, uh, all physiological, um, all physiological uh, page and osmolarity level make like we have inside. Yes, that's why uh, we using we can use this. The main advantages of this filler is that you can use it in all patient who has swelling, who hasn't swelling, and it will be you will don't become at that patient swelling using this filler. Also, it is very clean filler from BDDE, more than one percent per million BDDE. It means that it is in two times less than FDA. Uh, need to have. So it is very, very safety product. Here you can see products which you can find 
with the C mark and you can buy it. Yes, and uh, here you can see the physiological pH level from 7.2 to 7.4. Our Alexa fillers uh, uh, shows the best results where we can, we are, where we speak about the pH level. Yes, what it means? It means that after injection you will don't get swelling. Uh, okay. Uh, also a smolarity, uh, three. It is uh, a high level of osmolarity. You see, 219, it's uh, osmolarity of the, our fillers. So it's close to physiological values, which minimize also swelling after treatment. Uh, the um, Alexa fillers also shows liquid accumulation of the water one to one. So volume that you get after procedures, you don't be afraid that in some days it will be increasing volume, for example, lips or something else. Yes, all results that you get after procedure, you will, patient will get another six, 10, 12 months. It depends of zone and of the filler. Uh, really, the main uh, advantages of uh, Alexa, it is uh, uh, it's very safety products which has natural uh, physiological osmolarity and pH level, maximum ranging from the fragments of uh, hyaluronic acid, maximum elimination of BDDE, formation of exhibition of form of hydrohel, and uh, there are two types of filler, volume for deep injections and medium, for example, for make nature leaps, and I don't, uh, I don't uh, know how I will feel without this filler when we spoke about periorbital area. It is the best one for the under eye area. It is, shows perfect results. I never try something better for this area. Mm. Uh, Alexa medium, it is 17.5 milligram per mil. Volume, it is 20 milligram per mil. Uh, mm, recently, uh, plenty of the BDDE, uh, no more than 1% per million. It's very clean and safety product. Uh, also, I would like to present you some clinical study. Uh, it was study about safety and how long Alexa fillers uh, stay in the tissues. So here we see the lips before, uh, uh, after procedure, after procedure, uh, we see here, and uh, six months after procedure, very good natural result. And what we see on the ultrasound, ultrasound um, diagnostic, it, it is uh, the picture uh, six months after procedure. So you see any, I cannot see any parts of fibrosis, yes, in the lips. So it integrates perfectly. I don't see the same results where I was used another filler. So integration in the soft tissues really are the best. And we don't get fibrosis, yes. We don't get any, uh, any granulomas or something, or, or something else. This another patient also before, after, and six months after. After six weeks, we find our filler also without any fibrosis. So the integration of this filler, it's thankfully, but the pH level and osmolarity are really perfect. So as a conclusion, Alexa filler lasts more than six months. In tissues, six, 10, 12, we talk about it and has a high safety profile because in 100% uh, patients we don't fight, we don't find fibrosis. If you ask me like a surgeon, do we need fibrosis after our aesthetic procedure? I will answer you no, we don't need it. What is fibrosis? It's scar. And when we talk about stimulation, some processes for the anti-aging, what we can stimulate in the scar tissues, nothing. So uh, we don't need it. Uh, it's uh, some results. 
uh, I like this filler because it shows really natural results because of the uh, for uniform formula, um, osmolarity and pH level, and because of it don't make the fibrosis, swelling, and other way. 3 ml needle, 27, 25 after procedures, volume 2 ml. Also, what is it here? Periorbital area, very nice. Uh, natural correction, 1 ml volume to the parasagamatical space and 1 ml to the periorbital area. Also the same situation, patient after procedure looks more fresher and natural, it's very good. The same uh, situation, only periorbital area correction with the uh, Alexa medium product. It is really perfect product for this area. I haven't used better and I use all that we have but it is perfect for this area if about volume we can discuss somebody like when filler uh, increase in volume and become swelling mm, I don't like for example it but in periorbital area we don't need swelling we don't need anything because area is very delicate so that's why medium it is the perfect product for for it what else I have here? Of course, it's surgery. It's patient for surgery, but she don't want to do it. And we see volume to the uh, prezygomatical space and medium to the periorbital area. It's really, she become really looks more fresher. Here is the same. Uh, and here we can find 3 ml of volume to the mid face of this patient and to the, uh, to the lower face. Also we see here the correction, the putting filler over the, zygoma, uh, over the mandibular retaining ligament. Here we see the line of jaw, here we see the straight line. Here is the same situation, yes, patient become, become more fresher. Um, so I think it's good and natural result. Also jawline correction and the chin correction using Alexa volume with the needle after the procedure <coughs> we see the results. Also one more injection chin and the jawline correction. It looks really pretty and younger and fresher. Uh, this is all for the theoretical part. I hope that it was interesting. I hope nobody will, nobody will sleep during my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. It's my contacts. We can be, we can be in touch. Uh, maybe if somebody has some questions, I will be will, very pleased to answer it. Thank you so much. What is our plan? Now we have the break, yes? Yes, we have the lunch break. Lunch break? Yes, and after the injection. Mm -hmm. But first, uh, I would like to give the diploma. Diploma. So we cannot have a photo here. Sure. And after we go first, sure. for, uh, for the lunch. Mm -hmm. Can you sign? Yes, I will sign, okay. I don't need it yet.